All right, in this um, recording, I want to do a few things. Um, last time we saw how the dot product works, um, just kind of the mechanics of it. Uh, but in this uh, video, I'm going to focus on an actual practical use case. Um, second, I'm going to look at this trick we'll sometimes do where we'll have um, a column just containing ones, kind of a strange thing when you first see it. Uh, and then third, we're going to talk about why we might want to multiply <coughs> a matrix by a vector using a dot product. Um, last time we saw cases where we would multiply um, a horizontal vector by a vertical vector using the dot product. Here we're going to be multiplying a matrix uh, by a vertical vector. Okay, so this is going to be very practical, right? So in this first case, um, I created this data frame. And the data frame contains information about houses and how many beds, baths, and, and what year they were built. Okay, so generally, uh, you know, being built in a newer year means it's going to be worth more uh, and more beds and baths are also good. Uh, now down here I have, um, have a function, which is a little hard to fit, so maybe I'll just um, kind of wrap this around a little bit like so. Um, so, so I have this function here, and what this function is doing is it's really a model of housing prices. Um, so it's going to try to estimate how much a house is worth. Um, how, how is it doing that? Well, it's taking in this house, uh, which is a row from a data frame. So that means this is going to be a series. And uh, within that series, I can look up individual values about that house. And then I'm multiplying it by these coefficients. Okay. And return, and, and then at the end I subtract uh, 3,200, and uh, that's what I'm estimating for the house. Now, does it matter uh, where this model came from? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, maybe I got it through machine learning. Uh, maybe some real estate agents um, sat down and estimated it. Uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing if people just make up a model as long as they can um, actually show that it works well um, in practice. But regardless, I have this model, right? And, and let's just see how it works. So um, if I have my houses here. Um, I can grab a single house out, like I could get um, the first house if I wanted to. Oh, uh, that's at I location zero. Um, and I can see, okay, there's two beds, uh, one bath, and it's 1985. And so I may pass this in to predict price, like so. And I see, okay, that house is worth about 196,000. Uh, what about this other one? Um, this second house has one more uh, bedroom and it's slightly newer. I'm going to try passing this in and I see, okay, well that's, um, let me actually just, I forgot what the other one was already, 196, uh, 260, so it's worth a little bit more, right, because another bathroom and, it, and it's newer. Um, and, and I can draw on for others, I think the others are even, even more valuable. Um, so there's ways I can model this operation here using the dot product. So, so what is this doing? Well, I guess I do a bunch of multiplications, right? And then I do, then I do a bunch of additions, and that's exactly what the dot product does. It multiplies um, kind of combinations of, of values and then adds them up. Okay, so it's definitely a very natural thing to do with the dot product. Before we do that, one other thing I want you to think about is when you see things like this, um, you should be able to comment on on what is important in the model or what is important in the price. So for example, when I look at this, um, one of the things I'm seeing is that there's a bigger like, coefficient on beds than there are on baths. Actually four times more, right? And there's all kinds of practical actions I might take on that. If I'm thinking about um, adding either a bedroom or a bathroom as some sort of remodel on a house before I sell it, maybe I'm a real estate agent, I'm kind of buying and flipping. Um, assuming beds and, and bathrooms are equally expensive, it would be much better to add um, a bedroom in this case. Again, the habit of doing that. Okay, so back to what, uh, back on track. How can I do this uh, doing the dot product? So what I need to do is, um, is I need to capture these three pieces in a vector, right? And then I'm gonna, at least for now, have this be a separate variable. So these will be my coefficients. And it's kind of strange, but uh, in a lot of cases, I'll actually use x for our coefficients. That's a little counterintuitive to many people. Um, and I want to create an array here. And I'm just going to paste these down here. So 42.3, 10, 1.67. And, um, and then I have my b value, which is, I guess, a kind of an intercept. is going to be negative 3, 2, 1, 3. 
I have that. And um, let, let me actually just peek at x here. Remember last time how we said that we generally want our vectors to be um, uh, or oriented vertically by default? So I'm going to reshape this into rows and columns. And, um, and I know that I want to have one column and um, three rows. Well, well, I guess I really want however many rows necessary to make this work. So I'm just going to put negative one. They're very common, negative one, one. Right? And I have that vertical vector uh, for my x. OK. Let me, um, let me grab the other piece. So I had the houses before, right? So I have this houses data frame. And, uh, and it turns out that data frames are based on NumPy arrays. So I can actually get the underlying NumPy values just like that if I would like. Okay, maybe I'm going to put that in a matrix A, right? So I have that. Okay, so I have these coefficients here. Let me, let me actually just switch this around to save some space. So I want to see the, uh, excuse me, I want to see the um, these coefficients second. And so, so how can I do this operation that I was doing earlier, right? How can I do the multiplications and add and then subtract this piece? Uh, well, first off, um, I want to do this vector. I want to multiply that vector by this other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say from here, I want to get um, house zero, right? And I want to, right, remember I have a, a row slice and then uh, a column slice. I, I know I want to have all the columns, right? I want to go all the way across. So that, that part's easy, right? That I know I want a colon. And then this one, um, I, I could do something like that if I want to get that first row. Um, but that's not going to really help when we're doing this linear algebra, right? Because we want to think about what the orientation is of our vectors, right? And, and so really, even though we're having vectors, we're always doing two-dimensional things like we did for x, right? So a better way to do this would be, say, 0, colon, 1. I do that, and now now I can actually tell that hey, this is a horizontally um, oriented uh, vector, right? So that's house one, and maybe let me just do all the houses here for a moment. So house two, three, four. Um, this one starts at one, two, three, and then this piece is drawing three, two, three, four. And let me just take a peek at H four. Okay, so four bedrooms, two bathrooms, twenty twenty. That correct? Yep, four, two, and twenty, twenty. Okay, so I pulled out all of these vectors, one for each house, and I have my coefficients and my x variable, and um, and so what I can do is if I want to, I want to multiply four by forty-two point three, and add that by two times ten, and add that by twenty twenty times one point six seven. So I'm going to say numpy dot dot product. I want to multiply house one by what? You know what, I should have really, let me actually fix this to be less confusing, right? I ought to count from zero, right? So house zero, I want to multiply that by x, right? That's how I, uh, let me just look at this again, right? So here's h0, my horizontal vector, there's x, my vertical vector, and so I multiply those together, and um, and that's not quite right, is it? Because what am I doing so far? So far I've done this part of the calculation, right? That's the, the x times that row. But I still have to add in this factor, this b, right? So I'm going to down here, I say that, plus b, and I get 196. And I, and I think before that was the same thing we had uh, by our original version, right? So if I had predict, um, what was it called? I'm sorry, predict price. Predict price of um, uh, what was I predicting? I was predicting the houses dot i location of zero, right? I get the exact same same value. And here it's bundled up and 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 kind of uh, the array, right? And here it's not, but I see I'm getting the same value. And so if I wanted to, um, what I could really do is come back and simplify uh, this function. <clears throat> I can do something like um, like this. I could grab Grab these pieces here, and uh, and I'm going to put this up here, and uh, and then what am I going to return? Um, I'm going to return. Well, I guess I'm not going to quite do that, right? Because here I'm getting a series, and I don't want a series. But you could imagine I could do that, right? Then I'd have to change the type uh, that I was passing in uh, to be a horizontal vector. Okay. Now 
it would be nice to simplify this a little bit. What I'd really like to do is actually have um, this B value be part of X. All right, so let me let me actually head up here. All right, so this is uh, the second thing I wanted to show you. Why can't I just, um, you know, instead of having these be two separate things, why can't I just have this be uh, like another one of my coefficients? All right, so I want to do that. And I see now, now I have that B value down here. Right? All these other values are the same. They're just in scientific notation. Okay, so what happens then <coughs> if I want to do this? I want to multiply those together. And it's telling me that the shapes are not compatible, right? When I look at H0, right? Because, I mean, it's trying to multiply this by this and this one by this piece, this piece by this piece. And then I have this absolute term at the end um, that doesn't really work, right? So the shapes are not, not aligned, right? If I'm trying to do all these paired multiplications, I have to have the same number of numbers um, on each of my vectors. The very common trick that people will do is um, they'll just try to patch up their data frame. They'll do something like this. Where did I, um, here, here was, I guess, where I grabbed A before, right? Uh, actually, let me just, Put this up here. How can I patch this up? So I guess I'll do this right here now. Um, what I can do in my house's data frame is I can add a column, right? I can add a column, maybe call something like constant equals one. And uh, you can see I'm adding that there. And um, and then of course that shows up when I pull it out as a NumPy array, and it shows up later when I when I have my houses, right? If I do that, then that's gonna make my life easier, right? Because if I have all these coefficients, and then here I actually have three pieces that are real data and then one for my constant factor, it makes it very elegant later to just do the dot product between a house and the coefficient. So let me let me run down this again. And uh, and I'd already looked at that. Here, now this works great, and I get the same answer I did before, 196.55. All right, so you'll see that a lot um, in, in this kind of work, right? You'll see that, uh, that people are adding a, a constant column. Okay, so those were two things that we had um, had wanted to look at so far. Let me, um, let me just actually show you something quick. So um, let's take a look at what all the houses are. Right, and I'm going to do this next one. I'm basically drawing one row at a time. Okay, so here are my four values I have. <clears throat> Something cool about, um, well, let me just print off what these were again, right? So here I was doing like H0 times X, right? So I was multiplying H0 by X. What, what happens if I have that whole array? What happens if I take that array um, times X? So I've seen what this times X is, I get one number. This times X is, I get one number. When I multiply um, a, a matrix by a, a vertical vector like this, it's just trying to do that operation on a row by row basis, right? So instead of getting one number, uh, like I've been getting before, I'm gonna get a column um, uh, of the values. So let me, let me just do that. I'm gonna say, um, uh, I'm going to say right down here, I'm going to say numpy dot dot a and then x, right? And you can see right here that the third row for that last row times x gives me this. And then, right, so this, this times x gave me that. You see it shows up down here as well, right? For the H2, the second house, I got 334, and I get this as well. All right, so I can very quickly um, do the multiplication on all of them at the same time. All right, so you can really think of multiplying a matrix by a vector as just doing a bunch of different vector by vector multiplications. Okay, and it's very useful, right? So for, for multiple reasons. One, it's just elegant, right? If I want to go back to my original data frame, and add a column that says uh, price estimate. I can just draw like this and I'm gonna say, okay, well, I'm just gonna multiply that matrix by that. And I can look at my houses and I see, okay, there's the estimated price for each of them. 
There's also a performance advantage here. Um, I could have had a loop, right? I could have had a loop and I could have done one multiplication at a time. Um, but when we try to tell the computer all at once, hey, I want to do all of these different multiplications, sometimes, depending on the hardware and maybe like the software packages on top of the hardware, there are opportunities to do multiple steps at the same time, right? Can we work on multiple rows at the same time or kind of do multiple multiplications at the same time? So this kind of thing, right? When I multiply a whole big matrix by a vector is going to be faster than if I had just some um, loop doing it, right? So we get both speed and convenience, which is kind of a, a rare combination computing.